What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint, and guess what? I'm back with another statue unboxing and review. This is the Prime One Studio Bane. This is the Venom Edition from their Museum Masterline from the Arkham Origins video game series. This is another one-third scale piece. It's number 489 out of 750. I've seen pictures of this. It's a pretty old piece, but I'm excited to see this in person. So let's go ahead and get him out of the shipper. But before we get started, guys, I want you to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and hit the like. We are giving away this MCU Phase 2 box set once we hit 80,000 subscribers. I want you to stay tuned until the end of the video so you can see what you got to do to enter. All right, so here's a good look at the art box. You have a wraparound image of the statue, kind of stylized, that goes around the front to the side. The Arkham Origins Frozen Batman logo. The back is just like the Red Hood Bat logo, warnings. And you have this Bane kind of gas mask look on the side. So very cool box, very dense and heavy just like Red Hood. And uh, no damage on this one, so let's hope for the same on the inside. Alright, another three layer box. Let's do the same thing we did with Red Hood and grab the base out of the bottom first. Alright, just like Red Hood. You have this white fabric instead of that paper. I think that's so classy. And a nice wide base here for Bane. Let's take a look at this thing. A little rattling on the inside, no big deal. Here's the bottom of the base, similar to Red Hood. Yeah, that one is wide, wow, look at that. All right, so it looks like we also have the bottom half of Bane. Wow, he is huge, look at this guy. Dang. That's a big boy. I like the felt here too. So when you key in the top part of the torso, you don't scratch anything. All right, he just sits there like that. Now let's get the top layer and take a close up on his portraits and some other pieces of the body. All right, this version of Bane comes with three different head sculpts. Let's take a look at them all here. You have his unmasked, and he has this scarred up face, which kind of has an outline of what his mask would be. And wow, the detail is amazing. I love the paint job on here, the stubble, the wounds, even like the hair looks great with the different you know shading of color mixed with the texture of the sculpt. Then you have two masked portraits, one with an angry face gritting his teeth, the other with a stern, serious face with his mouth closed. Both of them have the same sculpt, it looks like, as far as the, um, the mask goes but I really like the details and the textures on these head sculpts here. All right, we have his left arm here, and wow, I really like the detail on the tubes. I think that looks awesome with that translucent resin. Wow, look at the detail on his on his wrist guard thing here. He's got the pointing hand. Then he got his right arm, closed fist. The tube looks awesome, just like with the other arm. And that's it for the arms. All right, and then we have the top part of the torso, and you have to be really careful with these tubes. You don't want to grab it by the back because I already felt a little bit of like a weakness if you're grabbing it by the tube. So it has a lot of styrofoam here to protect it so that it doesn't get pressure on it. But wow, it looks great. All those green translucent tubes look awesome. The gauges on him, the backpack that holds the venom looks amazing. All right, let's key this bad boy in. Boom. And lastly, there's a part of the base. And that should be everything. Let's clean this mess up. And uh, we'll put the rest of Bane together and bust a review. Man, this is a tall statue, guys. Let's go ahead and get these arms going. This is his right arm. That keys in like that. Left arm is a pointing arm. Boom. And let's just start with the unmasked portrait.
There you have it. Unmasked portrait. He is a beast, man. That portrait is really clean. I don't think I would ever display him with that portrait. It's an awesome option to switch up every now and then. And it's from the video game, so it's a cool nod to that. Wow, I'm just taking him all in. Um, while we take a look at the statue, let's go over a brief history of Bane by digging into the Omnibus Library. So Bane first appeared in the graphic novel The Vengeance of Bane Number 1. That sets off the Nightfall storyline in the 90s where Bane breaks Batman's back. Now, Vengeance of Bane is a true graphic novel. A lot of people use that term to describe a trade paperback. Like, I hear people say the Watchmen graphic novel. But really, a graphic novel is a story that was first released as a trade paperback, not collected in single issues prior. So Watchmen has 12 issues. That's just a collected edition. This came out and it was just a trade paperback. It's the first appearance of Bane. It's a square bound book. It's pretty thin. But you have Bane's origin and you can see the influence here for what they use in the Dark Knight Rises movie. And Bane is depicted as much more of an intelligent mastermind criminal here. He's not the mindless hulking beast that we see in the Schumacher films. This same omnibus, Nightfall Volume 1, also has Batman... 497 which is the breaking of Batman's back you can see the prior panel from the previous issue the cover and then the iconic panels where Bane cracks his back probably what Bane is most known for anyway that's a brief history on Bane and like I mentioned yeah he showed up in the what was it Batman and Robin movie the Joel Schumacher films where he was a big hulking beast he wasn't intelligent whatsoever then Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight Rises shed him in a much better light I like to think that the comic book version is somewhat of a mix between those two. He is a large beast, especially pumped up on Venom, but he's also uh, a strategist and he's smart and he's a cunning criminal. As far as this statue goes, he is a crazy impressive piece. I mean, this guy is humongous. Let's go ahead and measure him really quick. The tallest point of him is definitely the head, so I'm going to have to stand up to measure this guy, man. He stands about 34 inches tall, about 15 and a half inches wide. The depth of the base is around 13 inches. You probably give maybe a couple more inches if you're talking about his outstretched hand there. So humongous base. I really like this base. It doesn't look like a building top like most of the Arkham Knight. I mean, Bane belongs on the ground level, right? He's a big dude. He can't be running across rooftops. So the base has that same kind of one inch thick black uh, pre-base or whatever you want to call it that the building is sitting on. The building looks amazing. I love the little uh, gas mask Bane faces that are on the sides of the building there. All the little intricate details and designs on the building, plus the brickwork. And they did a really good job of sculpting in that old weathered look on this building. This, this base is more of a one solid color, more of that dark gray. Like I said, uh, he's on the ground level, so it doesn't look like we have any bronze gargoyles for this guy. Looking at Bane, his boots are massive. He's got these bear trap type shoes that go up to the shin guards on his shins. Padded type of um, pants around his thighs. He's got pouches and vials and little... Uh, tubes of something here on his waist that he uses I'm sure uh, against Batman I think sculpt wise they really go all out with the details like the boot buckles and everything and the intricate designs on the actual shoes and cloth the torso like I showed you guys up close is amazing I really love how much detail you have a honeycomb kind of texture on the inner part of his vest then you have all these straps buckles and then of course those translucent green tubes that's running the venom into his system from his backpack. His arms are massive. I can't help but feel they look a little short, man. Like his right arm, I feel like his arm should be a little bit longer. I don't know, what do you guys think in the comments there? I mean, he's definitely going to be off proportion-wise because he's such like a large hulking character. But should his arms go down a little more? I don't know. We talked about the portraits. Like I said, I really do like this portrait. It has a neck seam, but it's really thin, man. I think they did a great job of hiding that seam. But let's take it out and let's put on 
the mask portrait with his mouth closed. And when you have a mask like this, it's kind of like a wrestling mask, right? Like, it definitely hides that scene because it just goes right around with the fabric of the mask. I would definitely pose it like this. I love how this looks. He's pointing. He's got that serious face. But you got to go grit, gritted teeth portrait here. I love how Prime 1 does the teeth. They make them nice and shiny. You can see the individual lines well. And he has just so much more aggression in his face, man. So for me, this is the portrait that I have to display. They do a great job on sculpting that mask because you could even see the ears underneath the fabric. It looks really well done. The paint on him, no complaints. I mean, lines are clean. I think that the applications are done well. It doesn't really have or need shading because the cloth is a darker cloth. It doesn't look like it really needs any shading. I think all the ripples and wrinkles in the pants do enough of the shadowing. Everything's painted well. The silver like on his boots look weathered and on the shin guards. The skin I don't have any problems with. The portrait. The portrait actually, especially the unmasked, has the most amount of paint detail I would say. The way they made the stubble of his bald head a different color. And same with like the kind of texture mixed with the paint on his 5 o'clock shadow. Yeah, this is the most aggressive pose, though. Overall, I'm really impressed by this piece. I love the size of it. He looks angry as hell with this portrait on. The pointing takes it to a whole nother level. I was a big fan of these Arkham games. Not so much Arkham Origins. I was heavy into Arkham Asylum, heavy into Arkham City, and I started Origins, but I never got it back around to it. Um, I might need to go back and replay those. I didn't even notice the crumbled bat logo on the front of the base. See, that's the thing. When you do these unboxings, you don't even have enough time to take it all in. I know some reviewers like to do them separately, but um, I don't know. I think I talk enough about it on the unboxing that a, a whole other video over review the way that I do it would be a little repetitive. Wow, so what, what more can you say? I want to hear what you guys think about Bane in the comments down below. You know, I mentioned Prime 1 Studio in the Red Hood video, and sure enough, when I posted Red Hood on my Instagram story and tagged them, Man, within like an hour, they had it reposted on that story. So I got to tell you, I really love their social media team. Uh, they're really on it, and I'm sure they get a, a bunch of tags. So for them to be on it that fast was super cool. Uh, this piece uh, shipped locally. So you can get it through Prime One Store. It doesn't always mean it's going to ship from overseas. So they have stuff here in the States. This one shipped locally uh, along with Red Hood, so I got them super fast. Uh, so de definitely check them out if you're looking into these older pieces. Let me know what is next from the Arkham line that you'd like to see me get up in here, man. I'm, I'm kind of eyeing the Arkham Knight, even though it's really, what, like a variant? Or Red Hood is a variant of that. Uh, I guess I need an Arkham Knight Batman. But I don't know. I might just use the uh, Master Race DK3 uh, as my one-third scale Batman and not go Arkham Knight. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, before I let you go, all you need to do to enter into this giveaway is be subscribed to this channel, hit the notification bell, like this video, and comment below. I'm going to promote this in some random videos, so you can comment on each video where I promote this, and I'm going to pick one of those to do a random YouTube comment generator. Once we hit 80,000 subscribers, we, we're going to do our live show, and I'll pick one of these videos at random and pick a winner. It could be worldwide. Anyone could win it. Just got to comment, subscribe like notification bell thanks thanks for watching if you enjoyed this review hit the gem on the left to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more statue unboxings hit the playlist to the right thank you for watching stay minty fresh peace